What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. And Darren Tipton and uh, joined today by a special guest, uh, Molly Tuzzo from Kentucky Volleyball and originally from Houston Skyline and a libero uh, 2023 graduate. Yes. Right. And entering her sophomore year at Kentucky. And Molly, thank you, first of all, uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody, as you know, um, uh, Molly got suckered in. We've been um, actually talking for about an hour. She uh, could escape me. And so now we're actually going to record and uh, get her on her way with uh, her busy summer, uh, taking summer school classes. I- I'm guessing yes. you said you had a right. test yesterday and uh, getting ready to get your little bit of uh, summer break. How many days do you guys actually get off in the summer? I th- well, at the end of the summer, we have five, but we had a little bit of the break before and after Japan. So. Oh, yeah. So you guys got to take the uh, the J- Japanese tour. So what was it like? You got done with spring semester mm-hmm. and then got a few days to go home. We had like a week and a half to go home. Oh, nice. Like we came back and practiced for a couple of days and then we went to Japan. Yeah, and that's a whole other story, but I know we're going to fill up the time, so we're going to skip that for uh, for now. And Molly's going to join us today. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about committed players, what they should be doing to prep for college, uh, what's changed for Molly between entering as a wide-eyed senior in high school and going through that freshman year. Um, It's a lot of ups and downs. And what's new between year one and year two? Um, She's going to give us some recruiting advice, what she's learned. Um, uh, We're going to talk about college athletes and do they talk about uh, top topics that affect them and and people in the volleyball world talk about. And then also we're going to talk about some of the best backcourts in college volleyball. Um, She's definitely part of one of those. And we're going to end hopefully with previewing the first serve classic and um, they're leading it off. They're literally leading off the college volleyball season um, with that. So Molly and I have a lot to talk about and um, uh, just 20 well, maybe 30 days away from uh, the college volleyball season starting. Let me ask you this before we get into all that. <clears throat> I know coaches are, they love recruiting, uh, yes. but they are more than excited uh, to be done recruiting and get in the gym and do what they truly love. Athletes, do you guys feel the same way you're ready to be done with the workout summer school camps and you're ready to train and you're ready to compete again? I'm very ready. It's not the same in the summer because we obviously don't have the coaches. So we're just open gym the whole time, but we're definitely all very ready to get back with the coaches and actually train and practice consistently. So, and how about play matches that matter? That's also very, (laughs) we're all ready for that. You're like in the back of my mind, I think I remember why I came here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, December's been a while. So, all right. So we had a lot of things to get into. Um, and I appreciate it. 
<clears throat> Molly knows uh, we're asked some questions that are uh, that are tough. They're some are a little awkward to talk about, but uh, but again, it's about educating uh, prospects in the future off of what she's learned, and and it's different. Uh, and so now let's get into this um, because we want this to be geared a little bit more for commits. Uh, so maybe mm -hmm. these 26s that have decided now, uh, they've they've verbal or even 25s that are. <laughs> They've decided they're heading into their senior year, whether they go in December, which is kind of, or January, which is kind of a new phenomenon for volleyball commits. That hasn't happened forever, but a mm -hmm. lot more of them that are going to top programs are graduating early. Mm -hmm. um, what, as you look back, is there anything that you think you could have done mm -hmm. to prep to make you more ready for entering Kentucky? last year, like between that time you committed to when you stepped on Kentucky's campus, is there advice you would give somebody that you're like, Hey, I should have been done more of this. Um, I don't know if there's anything in specific that I would have done better, but I think a lot of commits can kind of get comfortable and they're like, okay, I've committed. Like I can kind of take a back seat, kind of relax. But I think as soon as <clears throat> Commit, that should be like your sign to like I need to go like I need to work hard every day like it doesn't stop whenever you just commit so I think just really taking that and being like all right this is where I'm going to get better until I go there because it's a big jump from high school into college so I think just getting in the gym getting working outs in and I think that is probably my advice is to just not let off the gas and kind of stepping on the gas a little more and preparing yourself for yeah. Well, and and we we'll a couple of the bigger questions in a second, but you know, athletes always tell me, and I know um, the the technique work and and mm -hmm. specialization at colleges is, is completely different. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if you replicate if there's a way to replicate that before you get there. Yeah, but I hear you know the training and the intensity of it. Is there a way that you could somewhat start to replicate that when you're still in club or you're in high school that could better prepare you um, mm -hmm. for going to college? Um, I think ask, just asking questions, asking your coaches, like what kind of things am I doing now that might be different in college or how am I serving different than how I should be in college or passing? Um, Cause there was a lot of things that I completely changed once I got to college. Um, like my passing completely changed, my serve completely changed. So I think just asking questions for how you can kind of incorporate that into club and high school um, will really help get kind of a <clears throat> lead up process on that. Excuse me. So you mean talking with your future college coaches? Mm -hmm. Or even, staying. yeah, even the teammates, players, current players, old players, anything like that. Just getting in contact with them and kind of asking what's different, I guess. Amazing people. That word communication comes up again. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Communication <laughs> in life. Isn't that crazy? How simply communicating helps your life be better. Yes. Yes. So, um, so talking to future teammates, what should I be doing? Um, talking with coaches, assistant coaches, what mm -hmm. do you see me needing to work on at least attempting um, to do that? Do you think uh, having a is, is it a necessity to go get, you know, like specialized lessons or you know, work with a personal trainers. It's something they can do within their club. Um, our clubs, I don't know, are clubs open to that? Um, totally revamping their game when they're in club? Or is that something they probably have to do on their own time? You might have to answer that for me. Um, I mean, I personally, one of my club coaches is now a current college coach and he was coaching like the USA and stuff. So he taught me in club kind of the things that, colleges do more um so i think it depends on the coach um if they want you to stick to what's working now and not change anything until college or if they're open to you changing that and maybe even them teaching like the rest of the players um so i think it really just depends on the <clears throat> good let's uh let's talk a little bit about the mentality we need to focus on that probably more so mm -hmm. How do you develop that college mindset? Um, 
because I'm guessing that's a huge part of the transition. Yes, it is. Um, and one, sorry, uh, one, the work ethic. Let's just start there before we talk about all the life changes of college. How can I, because everybody at high school thinks they're working hard and they are, they're working harder mm -hmm. than all their friends. I, I get that. But how do you explain to them that it's even a different step? Um, um, <laughs> I mean, I definitely thought when I was in high school and club, I was like, I'm working hard. I'm getting extra reps in the gym. Um, but when you get to college, it's definitely a lot more and a higher level than I was expecting. I knew it was going to be pretty tough um, going into it, but I don't even know how I would describe it. I think it's just a lot faster. You're in the gym a lot more. You're doing meetings and other things along with getting in the gym. You're also taking classes at the same time. So it's a lot more work and you definitely have to manage your time well, get recovery all the time. So I think just getting in the gym as much as you can early on can kind of prepare you for that. But I think that was just the biggest thing. So so explain, be, give me maybe a specific mm -hmm. with that. Uh, you said you worked hard um, and I'm not doubting you. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I bet you did, um, but you worked hard. Is it more the type of work you did and being more specific with your reps and quality reps, mm -hmm. right? Rather than saying, hey, two hours is two hours. Hey, I was in the gym two hours. I was in UK's gym two hours but it's what I did in those two hours that was much more meaningful. Is mm -hmm. that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Like so it's definitely a lot more little details, constantly getting better. I feel like in club practices, you're kind of just getting reps and whatnot, but I think college, you're always improving. Like the game is evolving every single day that we play. So I think there's never a point where we're just like at a standstill. I think everyone in the gym, especially at the collegiate level, wants to get better every day, every second, every rep. So I think it's just a different mindset in that thing and just quality reps. And it's a lot different than how it was. All right. So give me, uh, I'm a, I'm a bro. Um, <laughs> I'm a 26 bro that just committed. Give me a specific example of what you maybe did mm -hmm. and how a specific thing you do now that's better or more quality a specific skill and how it's different at college what yeah um I think passing was kind of the main thing the serves are obviously a lot harder um so I think in club it was kind of just like oh it's a good pass like that's all that really matters um but I think college like angles is so much more important now because the serve is coming at much higher speed um so I think that was like the biggest change, I guess, um, was just really focusing on the angle every single time and not as much like feet. It really just matters about your angle, to be honest. All right, let's move on now and talk about something a little more difficult, the, men the mental part of preparing. What, what are things they can do so those things are in place so they can concentrate on learning all the new volleyball things that they're going to have to deal with? Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely think just like being independent, like doing things on your own that maybe you didn't do on your own previously. Um, I think that was the biggest challenge for me was just like learning how to do everything on my own because I obviously don't have my parents. I don't have my siblings with me. Um, so I think really doing, I was pretty independent in high school, I would say. Um, so I think really just getting out of your comfort zone and doing things on your own is the biggest thing you can do to prepare yourself for that. All right. Um, so I, I want to ask you, and this something we talked about uh, before, and so I, I've asked your permission. Um, I I have this question. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have this question of everybody, and I know I know the right thing to say is, "Hey, I'm just going to show up." I'm going to compete every day and I'm going to help the team win, whatever that takes. Right. But you all at your level, you're all high school, everything's you're all, all Americans. You get all these, I read about you in all these other publications and mm -hmm. you're all in all these rankings that really don't matter. Um, and 
you all have to think at some you've never really sat on the bench a lot of it at anything, right? What's that like when you go somewhere and you just you don't play right away? Yeah. Right. Um, and 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 not in a bad way. Um when mm-hmm. you're on great teams, yeah, everybody in that locker room is in the same boat. So just <laughs> if you don't mind getting a little personal, um, mm-hmm. what's that like? Um, it's, it's definitely tough at first. Um, I think, like you said, growing up, I was always kind of the bro and stuff like that. Um, but I think getting here, you, it all comes down to how badly you want it. So what I personally did was go in for meetings and ask what I can do better and how I can get that spot possibly. Um, so I set goals for myself, kind of things to look forward to. And okay, he told me to get better at this. So I'm going to work really hard to get better at that. And maybe that'll give me the chance or it's kind of just setting goals, individual goals for yourself. And I think just constantly telling yourself you're going to get that position, like you're going to work hard and get to that goal. So I think it's a little tough to kind of accept at first, but depends on how badly you want it and just going for it. And and how hard is it to have, I mean, we're in such a instant gratification society, mm-hmm. right? And and I know ESPN wants to talk about the one percenters that maybe do play immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, which it is a very, very small percentage if you break it down amongst all 300 U1 schools, right? Yeah. Um, but how hard is it to think long-term about if you're in a great program, they win mostly with veteran upperclassmen athletes that are a lot of times more mature and experienced. And, but how hard is it to keep that team attitude and stay invested and not get that bitter woe is me, you know? And, yeah. And, I, I'm okay if you're completely honest, right? Because I've I've been there. I was a bench. I rode the bench my whole career, and I was. I like to say I was the ultimate teammate, but I I get it. it, it it's tough. But when you're a lead athlete, how how hard is that to invest and put in all the time, right? And still stay an integral part of the team, mm-hmm. um, and know that hey, I got a long career um, to win a lot of matches and championships and those things when you're not playing right away. I think that was kind of the toughest thing for me was going in every day and giving it my all and still not really getting like to my end goal. Um, So I think just being surrounded by great teammates has really helped that for me. Um, I don't know if there's like anything that I've completely learned on how to deal with that and accept that yet. Um, But I think just, continuing to put in the work is all I really have to say um, yeah. and just keep going at it. Yeah. Well, and and I would think coaches, they're used to it when you're on yeah. that elite level where UK is, where all these programs are. We're on a championship level. They don't want you to be okay with not playing, yeah. I would guess. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like they want you, probably the point you're not hungry, you're not valuable, I would guess. Yeah, Totally. Right. And and that's a fine line. Um, do they have uh, I'm just talking about your program in particular. Like, do they have outlets? Are there coaches that are like, hey, come vent, come, mm-hmm. you know, are there teammates? Because I, I, I would think what tears the team apart is the infighting and the, mm-hmm. the bickering, which can tear locker rooms apart. And yeah. right. So yeah. what what is it with you guys that, that is a positive way to get those things out um, if, if, and when they happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I think our team does a really great job of not doing that and not venting to each other. Um, We have a sports psychiatrist or psychologist um, that you can go in whenever you want, set up meetings and just talk. Like he can't talk to the coaches. The coaches can't talk to him. His and your business goes nowhere. So I think that's a really great outlet for, all college athletes um, is really just going to him and anything you have to say, he's just going to be there with open arms, listening, giving advice. So he's been a really great help. And actually I think coach here is one of the first ones to jump on that at Kentucky and Mm -hmm. actively implement that years ago 
um, that are good. And again, it's not the most fun thing to talk about, but it happens, right? Like yeah. you can't jam these rosters full of all Americans. And I, I don't think a lot of things are changing in volleyball, but I don't think the roster size on the court is changing. It's still going to be six, yeah. right? And as, uh, recruiting advice or mistakes, um, maybe for you, just real quick matter. Yeah. Um, I think not rushing through the experience. Um, that was a big thing for me. I was the last one to commit. It took me a while. Um, and I really visited all the options and really looked at them. Um, so I think just not rushing through the process and just seeing the first opportunity you get and taking it. Um, so really just taking all of your opportunities and visiting every place you can because, I mean, it's determining your future. So <coughs> there's no rush, to be honest. Um so I think taking your time and really just going at the opportunity and weighing all of your options is my advice. And I hear that from almost every mm -hmm. current player I talk to. And then I talk to a 16 year old and their parents and they say, well, we get pressured. We get a timeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to lead into your growth and your maturity and your, your growth and confidence. Cause I think it's a great segue. So you hear that now, how do we talk back to your 16 year old self and parents? Because you talk about, you didn't have that confidence then either. And I talk about one of my big missions with this, if anything comes forward is I want those 16 year olds to be able to speak up more, not in a cocky, arrogant way, but I want them to have the confidence to speak to a college coach and just say, hey, I really like your school, but I'm not ready to commit in six hours. Yeah. Um, I think really just the experience helped me. I was definitely like that at first. I was shy and timid. And honestly, throughout almost the whole process, I was struggling with like finding that confidence. But as I went through and got more experience and had the uncomfortable conversations. That's what really helped me. So just being uncomfortable is going to make you more comfortable in the end. So I think really just getting that experience. And even if you don't want to have uncomfortable conversations, it's going to happen. So I think that's where my confidence grew the most was through. Right. Do you have any suggestions on what we can do or do those younger girls about it's okay to speak up when they get to college? I think really just knowing that you're in control. Yes. Like it's your decision at the end of the day. Um, I mean, obviously the coaches can give you something or not give you something, but whenever you have options and you're getting that experience, just knowing that it's your decision at the end of the day and it's your future. So I think being in control is how you can gain that confidence and knowing what can I say? What can I say? Obviously the limits, but it's their decision. So I think I wish I knew that earlier on. So yes. And it, amen. And it is. And what I tell them is the real fear is the fear of no. Mm -hmm. the, the real fear is if I say what's really on my heart, they're going to reject me and I don't want to get rejected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I say if they're going to reject you, they really don't deep down want you. Yeah. And aren't you going to hear that now or at some point? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, yeah. I mean, if UK was for you, UK was going to be there. It, if you said, hey, I need another week to talk about this. If they really, truly wanted you, weren't they going to be there? You yeah. know, mm -hmm. right? And so what I heard a lot in this class was school saying, hey, you got six hours <laughs> or we're moving on. Yeah. Well, if you said you needed 10 hours. And they said, no, did they really, really, really want you? Yeah. And they're probably with somebody else right now. I know it's hard and people are like, yeah, you're sitting there in your little studio. It's easy for you to say. Yeah. But right now, you guys all get that, that looking back, that probably wasn't a place I would want to be. Yeah. Now, thank you for just being honest and ans answering those things. Um, we got to move on. Let's talk about. Let's talk about volleyball to come, what you're here um, to do. Uh, first of all, let's touch on the top backcourts um, in the country. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, Nebraska, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Louisville. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's some of the best in the country right there. Yeah. Right? Yes. Tell me who else should be. I mean, we got Louisville, White All American. Obviously, Lexi is mm-hmm. there. A nicest college athlete I've ever interviewed. I mean, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great <laughs> job. But yeah. Lexi's been nice. She's interviewed with me three times. I don't know. I mean, first of all, she probably gets 8 million interview requests. So we're going to yeah. do that. <laughs> Molly, a couple of years, you'll catch her. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and you guys and, and Eleanor, that's, that's like a dream just at that position. Mm-hmm. But the talent and the history of those programs, that's going to be a great night of volleyball. It is it's super exciting. So when you guys as athletes look, you're like, it's a match. Do you still get jitters like you did in high school? Like, oh, first match of the year. Or you're like, oh, my God, everybody in the country is going to be watching. What What's the take as an athlete? I mean, there's definitely some nerves. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but the opportunity is just amazing. Um, so I think we're all just so pumped to kind of open it open the 2024 season. And I think there might be nerves at first or might not, but honestly, it's going to be such a fun night and everyone's going to be watching. So. Yeah. Everyone. I don't know what TV viewers, but I, for a regular season match, I think those will be crushed. um, (laughs) Whatever they will with those programs. How about for Kentucky? I joke with people. I know Nebraska takes that claim of the state of volleyball, but well, you in Louisville, I mean, the Commonwealth people, they, they got to have a claim for the state of volleyball. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Kentucky and Louisville, she has done the last few years, a national championship, by the way, everybody. Yes, Kentucky <laughs> has won a national championship <laughs> in the last few years, haven't you? Mm-hmm. What do we say? The, the best program nobody talks about, University of Kentucky. Amen. <laughs> So you're like, coach said, don't say anything on this podcast. I'll get us in trouble, didn't he? <laughs> said. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> but don't let Tipton say something that gets us in trouble. <laughs> well, like, you guys have great volleyball in Kentucky. Louisville is coming off, coming up just short, right? Mm-hmm. They're hosting. We're going to start the year in Kentucky. We're going to end the year in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Both Kentucky teams, I mean – Are you guys getting excited or do players, it's like, ah, it's just a match? No, we're definitely excited. And I think it being in the same place as where the national championship is and so close to home, I think that's a really great opportunity for us. And it's kind of more like, okay, if we are starting here, that's our end goal. We want to be back. So I think just that mindset, we're all ready to go for that. And we want to be in the Yum Center in December. So I think – just starting there really helps us with that mindset. All those big time programs. But let, let me ask you about that backcourt matchup with you and Eleanor, right? Eleanor and going against uh, Lainey and Lexi. Mm-hmm. You guys look at that um, because you guys don't get talked about near as much as they do. Mm-hmm. Do you look at that? Like, does that motivate you or are you like, yeah, it's just another match? I think that definitely motivates us because we're kind of not always under the radar in a way, but I think Kentucky should get a lot more kind of eyes than it does. So I think this is kind of a chance to prove ourselves and really put ourselves out there and show what we're about. So I think having them on the other side of the net really motivates us to do it and show everyone. Well, and they're just competitors anyways, right? They're motivated Every way. And I'm guessing their team has all the motivation in the Do you guys have a, a leader like on this team? I don't know who it would be, but do you have a fire who's like, like, let's go, like we need to prove it? Or are you guys all even keel, like, hey, we just get better every day? What what is it like? Do you have a fire and ice type person who mm-hmm. like let's freaking go and prove America wrong or, Hey, let's just slow and steady wins the race. Like what is it in your, what do you feel like it is as your players? I know what your coach's mentality is, but in your locker room, what is there a player like that? I think we all kind of have that mindset. Um, 
maybe we don't all show it, um, but I think we definitely have a lot of those leaders that are just fired up and I think it's not one specific person. I think we have a lot of those on our I thought of all those first year libero DSs, Molly, you obviously underrated. I thought you had the best year of any of them um, coming in with your serve game, um, first of all, but also what you did uh, when you got into the game. So um, uh, my ratings matter, but I have you as the <laughs> best um, libero DS in that sophomore class um, in the country. So don't let me down, okay? I won't. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, Molly, we're going to uh, let you go. And some of the stuff that Molly had, that's what's going to be coming in a little plug for our uh, Straight Talk recruiting series. that will be coming out in the fall. It's going to be advice on that mentality stuff um, from current athletes, coaches like Molly, um, on exactly what they go through and what you can prepare for for the college game. So excited she gave us a little insight. We're going to have more on that in our podcast, but uh, uh, things like that. Good to be back. College volleyball's coming. Um, training's coming for the high school season. And everybody, we just appreciate you joining in. Uh, 